Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We are live inside the game, and now we have the correct overlay. It's going to be Kuroki playing the Queen of Pain. He's on the radiant side. Remember, these players, the loser of this series is done in the 1v1, and their pride perhaps slightly diminished. The winner uh, is going to have a shot to move forward. And it seems that gods may have given me wrong information. As it looks like S4 is actually starting on the dire side. I, oh, maybe I got my slide mixed up. I'm not sure, but either way, this is game one, and it's going to be Kuroki on the Queen of Pain. He's opted for an early salve. He has that courier scouting out the rune. You can see it hiding in the tree's to top, and we're going to see what he chooses to spend his gold on. Will he go for that ultra-aggressive eco build? No, he's going to get a mantle. He's going to get some extra damage. Over on the, the dire side, we have S4, early observers placed. And placing one rather aggressively in the enemy jungle, this is going to spot any sort of movement from the Queen of Pain. Important, because now he can see not only the rune, but if she gets a good ganky rune, if she's heading in towards him. So, went for that aggressive ward, wasn't worried about the level 1 engagement, and is going to have some the good rune vision. Begins. Not opting to use his courier. And this is important, an important distinction. He's up against Queen of Pain. If that courier got spotted, it would be an easy courier kill, because she's got the blink. Lion, below average base move speed, he actually runs slower than the courier. So Queen of Pain can use the courier to scout, and can be less worried about getting sniped. So now we see the mid block. Who's going to get the better block? It looks like decent from Kuroki, but S4s are just a little bit better. More of that wiggle waggle back and forth. He'll have the high ground advantage. When it comes to trading auto attacks, uh, generally Queen of Pain's got at the edge here. She's got the better auto attack damage, especially with the extra stats and, and higher base damage. And of course the Shadow Strike. Kuroki is going for the Shadow Strike build. At least one point. When you're in 1v1, Shadow Strike is really important. The only reason to skip it would be if you're going for... If you're up against, say, a tri-lane on the side side of the map, or uh, you're up against the dual lane where you don't really want to get close, notice S4 using that Earth Spike not only to get uh, some harassment damage in, but also last hitting as well. And with the high ground advantage, it's keeping Kuroki a little bit more defensive. Kuroki, he saw the regen run top earlier. Now he's going to go and pick it up. Pain but S4 forced to be happy about this, and he's going for Mana Drain. He's going for uh, just a way to kind of neuter the Queen of Pain. Um, well, I'm, I'm interested to see how many points he goes for. You generally want to get at least one point in Hex to set up your Earth Spike. And even at level 1, Hex is quite good. It gives you nearly a 2 second disable, more than enough time to set up the Earth Spike. Uh, but the early levels of Mana Drain are going to allow you uh, to just harass the Queen of Pain, remove her Mana Pool. Without that Mana, she isn't that scary. And he went for a lot of plus damage, that's going to further delay his bottle. And S4 now forced to back off, but he's starting to move the mana down. Kroki blinks forward. He hasn't taken a third skill point yet. He thought about a first blood opportunity. Didn't skill scream. I think he would have had it, but just wasn't sure he would. Now he levels up Shadow Strike. And unfortunate for Kuroki, he had a shot there to first blood, but leveled up the Shadow Strike, he blinks in. Now, just not finding the opening. This might be a huge mistake. Kuroki throws a kill away. Thought he had S4 there. Feeling a little confident, a little overconfident. And an early first blood for Lion for Queen of Pain. This is borderline disaster because Lion is going to hit level 6 before she does unless he makes a mistake. And Kuroki, he's even going for Shadow Strike build, which means he can't even outpush the Lion, taking two points in it. Until you hit level 7, your scream won't be maxed. And that's only if you skip your ultimate. Uh, it's really going to limit his ability to do burst damage. Without that burst, you got to angle for mid to late game. Bottle up on S4. He's going for the bottom rune. He actually has a ward at both hills. You'll notice he placed this one here a little bit earlier uh, when he saw that Queen of Pain heading towards the regen rune. Made sure that he would see whatever she got and also have great vision Dyer's of her movement. So has wards attack. up, has the bottle, and closer to his boots. This is looking like a lot of trouble. This is a matchup Queen of Pain can win, especially through better rune control. When you give away that first blood, it really does get tough. And notice S4, just understanding the range of that stun perfectly. And even though Kroki blinks in, he doesn't have a leveled up Scream. He hasn't even Shadow Striked yet. He might give up another kill. There's an Earth Spike. That blink is a four second cooldown. This could be the end of the game. This could be one of the shortest games of 1v1 ever, but Kroki gets away with 10 HP. Oh man, Kroki is really playing ballsy. Even though he lives though, I don't know. This is not looking good for him. This is looking rather troublesome. He's a bit behind the levels, but only very slightly. S4 went to the bot rune, and Lion, with that 290 base move speed, and not having his boots yet, does waste a lot of time. S4 just predicted the Kuroki blink, and he will get away. Kuroki not really throwing out the Shadow Strikes. The one downside with that Shadow Strike, it has quite a bit of a windup compared to 
uh, oops, keyboard messing up there, compared to uh, the Screen of Pain, which is pretty much instant. So, I don't know that Kuroki really wants to be trading blows here. He misses quite a few creeps going towards that top rune. Remember, he doesn't have wards. He doesn't know where the rune is. And he's falling behind. That level 6 is coming. A well-timed hex, uh, a well-timed stun, finger of death. That could be it. And the new finger of death does 600 damage before reduction. I believe 25% of that is 125, so you're looking at 475 damage plus the Earth Spike, another 200, and that's going to be another 150. Yeah, it's a lot of freaking damage. It's almost the Queen of Pain's entire HP pool. She needs bracers. She wants to go in now, late with the Shadow Strike, and uh, still diving. Kuroki might just throw the game here. He knows once S4 gets 6, he's pretty much screwed, but S4's juking. S4 has an Impale. He's going to have a finger in one creep. I don't know if Kuroki realized how close he was. Oh, he, he'll be able to get away with that finger Dyer's of death being up. We may see attack. this game end with S4, with Kuroki just walking towards S4, getting fingered, and losing the game. That always sounds so wrong. He's actually got a suicide Dyer's to rush in. He's got a suicide to rush. Three oh, found trip for him. Buys the TP, and it's two kills. Suicide to rush does not count. The enemy hero has to get the kill. And so the game goes on. A cute little tactic by Kuroki. We're reading those rules carefully, I gotta say. Salve comes in for S4. This is still bad for Kuroki, though. He does get that free fountain trip, but still no boots on him. This means that Lion uh, can run into, can run him down, basically. And once he gets a single point in Hex, probably at level 8, then he can have that easy, reliable initiation. Normally what you want to do is, oh, maybe just win the game here. No, not quite enough. Every time Kuroki takes any damage, he has to bottle. Otherwise, he'll die to that combo. The combo does take a lot of mana, though. 345. S4 is going to have to make sure he always has enough. The six-minute rune about to spawn. And Kuroki, hopefully he'll get something good. He's going to need it. There's your impale. Just mana burning. S4 just bullying Kuroki. And he's actually keeping up in CS. This is the other downside to going for early points in Shadow Strike. You can out-CS your opponent if you're zoning them out of the lane. But if you're not able to trade blows, which he's not right now, he's just going to be driven away and, you know, then, the, then you wish you'd screw him pain, where you could attack. last hit, where you could push the lane and control it a little better. One thing Lion's bad at is last hitting under his tower, his base damage is quite low. But with this mana drain build, he can spam Earth Spike a little more. Now he hits level 7. This is about as big as the burst gets. Until level 11, but if this goes to level 11, Kuroki should have the edge. He can outpush the line. Uh, he can control the runes better. And in a longer term game, I think Kuroki can win this by pushing. That's just something S4 isn't going to have the edge in. So this is really the point where S4, he wants to find a kill. Maybe we'll even see potentially an early smoke. Just try and catch Kuroki off guard. But most likely, just going to be spamming that earth spike. Looking to find an opening for that finger of death and then win the game. Remember, once there's a single point in Hex, once there's that one point, he can throw the Earth Spike out even if he misses. If Kuroki blinks in, he'll get Hex. Then by the time the Hex wears off, the Earth Spike will be fairly close to cooling down, depending on how quickly Kuroki blinks in and how quickly he is to run away. So Kuroki's got to be a bit careful about those offensive blinks. Generally, when you're down like this, you save your blink for defensive play. He hasn't even screamed the creeps, and the issue is, if he walks in range to scream more than one or two creeps, he's in range of an impale, he's in range of a couple of auto attacks. And if you can auto attack first and then impale after, you maximize your damage. He's got the wand charge, he's got the ult, but not quite enough. Uh, too much HP on Kuroki. Kuroki's hiding in there. Imagine if he hadn't given up that early kill. This looks... It's a matchup that the line has that big early kill potential, but if you attack. play defensively, it is very hard to get those kills. Kuroki just constantly bottling, going back to Fountain whenever he needs to. And what can Lion do? He has lower move speed than the Queen of Pain once the boots come out. He is sitting back for the moment. He's guessing top. He gets a haste rune. And no wards up for S4. He may want to buy a new set soon. So, S4 in his first match here. How's it looking for him? Looking pretty good so far. CS is quite even. He's controlled the runes reasonably well. Even getting that one rune... Uh, it does make a big difference. It's Queen of Pain should really get them all in this matchup, unless she just doesn't want them. Unless she, Lion's going to get the runes, and she just would rather push. Kuroki running towards the bottom rune. Is it the moment to strike? He's just maxi mana drain. He's not taking any points in Hex. Just wants to make sure Kuroki never has any mana. There's your Shadow Strike, and then the back off. So he's going to win this by purely by attrition. You would never see this in a 5v5 game, but it does seem like a smart adjustment in this 1v1 matchup because 
monitoring just is so spit. You can permanently spam everything. And we're going to see Tranquil Boots next for us for. He doesn't need mana anymore. He can always monitor in the creeps, even if Queen of Pain blinks away. Oh, Karoki, what a play. Actually manages to dodge the stun there. But, 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 but. <laughs> oh, that's what I was afraid of. There's your GG. This fat number one is going to go the way of S4.